Hello students, I am Vidhu Vijayan. I teach biotechnology in Doon Public School, Delhi. Today, I am going to start this episode by asking few questions to you all. Am I sound boring to you? This is just to test your previous knowledge. What do you mean by biomolecule? A biomolecule is any molecule produced in the living organism which includes macromolecules and micromolecules. When I say macromolecules, it includes DNA, proteins, lipids, enzymes and carbohydrates. Micromolecules include primary metabolite, secondary metabolites and any other natural product. How do we isolate a biomolecule? Suppose if you want to isolate a nucleic acid from the leaf of a plant, how do you achieve it? How are you going to purify the isolated nucleic acid? There comes the importance of biochemical techniques. Any technique which helps in the characterization, isolation and separation of biomolecule is called biochemical techniques. I repeat, biochemical techniques are the techniques which help in the characterization, separation and isolation of any biomolecule. Today, let's discuss the techniques based on molecular weight. Under this portion, you will be studying about two techniques, centrifugation and gel permeation or gel filtration chromatography. Imagine a situation where you have put dirt inside a glass of water and you swirl the glass of water. What happens? What do you observe? You observe that after some time, the dirt gets settled down. This is what exactly happens during centrifugation. Centrifugation is a process that involves the use of centrifugal force to sediment particles in a centrifuge when it rotates. Rate of centrifugation is specified by the angular velocity measured in RPM. RPM is the revolutions per minute. Imagine a situation where you have ruptured the plasma membrane of a cell. What do you expect inside the cell? Yes, you could see lot of cellular components that is a mixture of cellular components. This mixture of cellular components are otherwise known as homogenate, cell homogenate. Now you want to work with a desired organelle. How will you do it? There comes the importance of a device called centrifuge. Come, let's go to the lab and let me demonstrate the working of a centrifuge. Today, we are standing near the high speed centrifuge. Let's discuss the working of centrifuge. Centrifuge has a motor which runs a rotor. There are different sized rotors. The size of the rotor depends on the amount of sample to be placed inside the rotor. In a centrifuge, you have a speed controlling unit which will increase the speed which is defined by the RPM otherwise known as revolutions per minute. You also have a temperature controlling unit where the temperature can be set according to the experiment and you also have a system to control the time. You have a switch to put on the motor and you also have a switch to put on the brake. We apply brake when we stop the centrifuge. The very important criteria that has to be taken into account is the balancing of the device. The amount of the sample that is the density of the sample should be equal and it should be placed opposite to each other. Now I have given you an overview of centrifuge. Let us discuss in detail about the process involved in centrifugation. Now let's switch on the centrifuge.
This is the knob which opens and closes the centrifuge. Now let's open the centrifuge. Inside the centrifuge you have rotor and it is this rotor that rotates when we increase the speed. We have already discussed about the speed controlling unit where when we increase the speed automatically the rotor speed also increases. Now let's open the rotor. What can you see inside? You can see lot of holes inside and it is into this holes that we put our centrifuge tube or append off. This is an append off. Another important criteria is the balancing of the device. Balancing is done by putting the append off or centrifuge at equal position that is exactly opposite position and also the density of the sample or the amount which is taken in the centrifuge tube should be approximately equal. This is a centrifuge tube but can we put the centrifuge tube inside this? No. That means you have a rotor of different size which is specially meant to put this particular centrifuge tube. From this, we can understand that rotors are of different size and the size of the rotor depends on the amount of sample to be placed inside. Now you have seen different size rotors. Now let me show you the process of centrifugation. Into one of the centrifuge tube, I have put little dirt and I have mixed it thoroughly with the water. I am going to put one of the centrifuge tube here. Now the second centrifuge tube contain exactly equal amount of water, it's not the sample and it should be placed here. So now the position as well as the density is more or less same. Let me close the rotor. Let me close the centrifuge. I have locked it. Now let's put on the centrifuge. Let's set the time. Let's set the time to 4 minutes. And let's set the temperature to 4 degrees. Yes. Now let me put on the motor and let's slowly increase the speed to 4000 rpm. Now it has become 4000, now the machine will run for another 2-3 to three minutes. Now the time is up, before stopping let's bring the speed to 0 by slowly turning the knob. Let's put on the brake, now the speed has come to zero once the rpm has come to zero let's put off the motor and let's switch off the centrifuge let's open the centrifuge now let's observe the samples you can very clearly see that the samples, the solid particles, that is the particles which are denser, they have settled down and you can very clearly see a clear solution in the centrifuge tube. The particles which get settled down, that is the heavier dense particles, they forms the pellet 
and the clear remaining solution is known as the supernatant. So the conclusion of the experiment is when a cell homogenate undergoes centrifugation, it gets separated into two components that is pellet and supernatant. The more dense particle they have a tendency to come down and settle because their molecular weight or the density is higher and they forms the pellet and the remaining clear solution is known as the supernatant. Now you are aware that centrifuge has a rotor and it is the rotor which rotates and inside the rotor there is a space where you can put the centrifuge tube containing the sample. Now let's see what happens when the rotor rotates. You know when the rotor rotates the more dense components of the cellular components they settle down because they have a tendency to move away from the axis of centrifuge. Whereas the less dense components of the mixture moves towards the axis of the centrifuge and this remaining clear portion of the solution is known as supernatant. Whereas the more dense components of the mixture which got settled down is called pellet. I repeat, when a cell homogenate is subjected to centrifugation, you get two things. One is a pellet and the remaining clear solution which is seen at the top is known as supernatant. Now let's discuss the principle involved in centrifugation. Centrifuge works on the principle of sedimentation. Rate of sedimentation is the rate at which the particle of given size and shape settles down at the bottom of centrifuge tube under centrifugal force. The rate of sedimentation is expressed in terms of Swedberg constant. The Swedberg constant is named after the scientist Swedberg, Theodor Swedberg, who is also the inventor of ultra centrifuge. Rate of sedimentation depends on the size, shape of the molecule and also on the viscosity of the solution. So students, we have discussed in length about centrifuge, the principles involved. In the next episode, let's discuss about the different type of centrifuge. Thank you. Thank you.